Good morning, it is filled to the brim and it is Wednesday, October 27th and we're talking about Christ in you, hope of glory and the riches that we have as a result of Christ in us and I'm focusing in on I can do all things through Christ. The truth, the riches that I can do all things through Christ. So we're doing this, this is part two. Yesterday we, we started it and I want you to know that the truth of being able to do all things through Christ is central to the riches that Christ purchased for us. And Colossians 1.27 tells us, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He wants His riches to be made known in our lives, which has to do with Christ in us and the glory of God being in our lives, permeating through our lives to others around us. And so we are to search out these riches. This is part of our journey with the Lord. This is part of our maturity is to search out. He wants these riches to be made known. And, and central to today's is that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I'm going to focus in on a new attitude. I can have a new attitude through Christ who gives me strength. Some of us need to repeat that. I can have a new attitude through Christ who gives me strength. You know, I have found that um, the concept of attitude in the church has been uh, acceptable, meaning having a fleshly attitude, having a carnal attitude. Many people, many believers identify um, an attitude that they may have with their own identity, who they are, their personality, um, their freedom, especially those of us in the Western world and in the U.S., that we have freedom to have these attitudes. But the truth is this, when we're in Christ, we are a new creation and we are being made like Him and we have to surrender those fleshly attitudes. So many of us hold on to attitude as an idol, that we actually put our attitudes above having the attitude of Christ, having a new attitude. And we exalt it as if when we're confronted about having an attitude that's fleshly or carnal or sinful or selfish or, or whatever you want to put in there, we're offended. Why are we offended? Actually, we shouldn't be offended. We should be surrendering our attitude and having a new attitude, which scripture speaks about. I want us to focus in on the scripture that speaks to us about having a new attitude. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. This is what Paul writes. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. We are to put off our old self, which has deceitful desires. And he connects this to having a new attitude of our minds. Now, I want to say something about putting off our old self. See, Paul relates putting off our old self because it has deceitful desires. The word deceitful actually means to mislead us, to lead us into error, to cause us to believe what is false. So in other words, to put off our old self means to put away those things, those thoughts, those ideas, those attitudes that lead us into error, that lead us into what is fault, false, what leads us into an entrapment. See, deceit leads us into an entrapment, which has to do with how we will respond to our circumstances, how we will respond to our troubles, how we will respond to our life. Our new attitude has to do with the mind of Christ and has to do with the new self. We need to not harbor attitudes as if they're our friends. We need to be aware of that. That is deceitful in and of itself. Let me just say this. I really feel very strongly about this. Our old attitudes, our fleshly attitudes, our carnal attitudes are actually toxic and poisonous to us 
and lead us into deceit. Deceit regarding how we see things, see people, see God, see our lives, see the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and even the deceit of how those toxic attitudes are empowering to us. See, the enemy wants to use our fleshly, old man attitudes to lead us into an entrapment so that we respond and react to things and circumstances because remember our thought life is what fuels our response. Our thought life is what fuels our actions and he wants to lead us into deceitful ways, back into deceitful ways of responding to things. But scripture says for us to put off our old self. Who's to put off our old self? We're to put off our old self. Listen, you say, well, I, how can I do that? How can I take captive these attitudes? Well, that's when we go back to, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. No, we can't do it in our own strength, but now you have the Holy Spirit. And we can, through the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our own power, not in our own flesh, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, which happens through our surrender, we can take captive those attitudes of the old man. Now you may say, well, what if I feel an attitude? What if I think something that has a bad attitude? Well, we will, because that's part of the process. But what we do with that is significant. We are to put off our old self. We are to allow the Holy Spirit to bring a new attitude of our minds, which is our new self. And that has to do with believing His Word. It has to do with the surrender of ourselves to the Holy Spirit, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Too long have Christians believe that unrighteousness had to do just with morality. So as long as I'm being moral, I, I'm not doing anything sexually wrong, I'm not doing anything wrong with stealing or killing or those types of things, as long as I am moral, then I am righteous. But this has to do with the attitude of our minds, that we can have unrighteousness because of the attitude of our minds. And the Lord wants us to address that. Those of us that really deal with carnal attitudes and harbor them and actually exalt them and create idolatry about our attitudes, meaning refusing to let the Holy Spirit address those attitudes because you've identified those attitudes with your identity, with your freedom, with whatever you want, your power, your strength, and who you are, and you have harbored those old carnal attitudes, the Holy Spirit is addressing that, saying you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, and that is to allow the Holy Spirit to confront those attitudes, bring them under Christ Jesus, remove those things, because remember, those things are what lead you into deceit. Those things lead you into error. Those attitudes, those carnalities in your mindset lead you into believing what is false, lead you into an entrapment. And that's why the Holy Spirit is addressing that. You know what? May we give our attitudes of our mind to the Lord today. So many times we want, oh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That has to do with some external battle that we face. Some enemy that comes against us. But you know what? We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength by addressing attitudes that can be very strong in us. He can give us strength to take those attitudes down and say, you know what? No, I am a new person. I'm a new creation, and I will take captive those attitudes of my mind. I will put on my new self. Those attitudes are under submission to Christ Jesus. I want you to pray about this word. I know it's a hard word, but it's an empowering word. You are a new creation. You no longer have the attitudes of the old self, but now you have Christ's attitude. Let his attitude be in you. That's the most empowering attitude you could ever have, is his attitude. And the truth is, is I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Pray about this word. God bless you. I love you.